the villagers called called swami a mahatma they compare him to mahatma gandhi when mahatma gandhi went without food how many things happened in india this is a man like that if he fasts there will be rain out of his love for us he is undertaking it this will surely bring rain and help us once upon a time a man fasted for 21 days and brought down the deluge when great souls that take upon themselves tasks such as this the atmosphere became electrified they forgot the fight and all their troubles and bickering so now the whole attention was shifted to uh, raju's fasting the village was astir everything else seemed inconsequential now they all wanted to see the miracle that raju's fasting will bring about they sat around in silent semicircle as before each in his place the women got busy at once sweeping the floor and filling the mud lamp lamps with oil for 10 minutes raju neither looked at them nor spoke but turned the leaves of his book and now raju knows that he is in trouble so when people tell him you are a mahatma we should consider ourselves blessed indeed to be able to touch the dust of your feet oh no don't say that raju tried to withdraw his feet but they crowded round him he tried to cover his feet he felt ridiculous playing this hide and seek with his feet he could find no place to put them so people want to touch his feet and raju doesn't want to allow them to touch his feet because he knows he's a fake person anyway velen sat still as if he were uh, a petrified sentry listen to me velen it is essential that i should be alone tonight i will speak to you tomorrow night so when people come to confirm whether uh, swami ji has begun his fast he says leave me alone and i'll see you tomorrow very well master you have your own reasons and at that night he had a fitful nightmare nightmare ridden thought choked three hours he could not sleep at night he had nightmares and he was worried because did he wonders did they expect him to starve for 15 days and stand in knee deep water eight hours and that's what people thought sadhu ji will be doing fast for 15 days and stand in the knee deep water so that the rains arrive and raju had no idea how he was going to do it because he was used to feasting on the offerings that people brought him of fruits and food raju moved down to his site you have to listen to me so don't go so far velen i must speak into your ears you must pay attention to what i'm going to say i am not a saint velen i'm just an ordinary human being like anyone else listen to my story so now raju sensing that he's in trouble wants to come clean about the whole thing and he wants to confess to velen that uh, in fact i am a criminal i am an ordinary man i have no miraculous powers that you think i have and so let me tell you what's my past but as raju's voice filled the night velen listened to him without uttering a word of surprise or interjection in all humility only he looked a little more serious than usual and there were lines of care on his face Raju wanted to confess his story so that Velen leaves him and uh, he can get away from the whole drama of fasting. However, it does not work because Velen looks even more reverential and uh, more serious in the presence of Raju. So then chapter 7 takes us back to the flashback, the story of Marco and Rosie. I was accepted by Marco as a member of the family. 
and uh, because Marco at this point doesn't know that there is uh, an affair going on between Rosie and Raju. Perhaps he married out of a desire to have someone care for his practical life, but unfortunately his choice was wrong. This girl herself was a dreamer if, he, if ever there was one. So he thought uh, they are not a good match and uh, they don't uh, complement each other. He, he has married a wrong woman and she has married a wrong man. He stayed for over a month at Peak House and I was in entire charge of all his affairs. Sometimes she said, I will stay on here and keep you company. Oh, modern girls are very bold. I wouldn't let my wife live in a hotel room all by herself if I had to remain on duty on a hilltop. So they continue living at that uh, guest house, at that hotel called uh, Peak House on Mempi Hills. And uh, Raju is part of uh, the group and uh, Marco has accepted him as, as uh, a visitor who could be with them for a long time. However, on the other side, my expenses were mounting, says Raju. The shop was my main source of income, together with what Marco gave me as my daily wage. My mother often told me, whenever she was able to get at me, you will have to keep an eye on that boy, a boy who was minding the shop, but it doesn't work. Finally, the boy himself takes up the job of a guide and Raju doesn't care for it. because Raju is obsessed with Rosie. In other ways too, I found it difficult to understand the girl. I found as I went on that she was gradually losing the free and easy manner of her former days. She allowed me to make love to her, of course, but she was also beginning to show excessive consideration for her husband on the hill. So that is something that Raju struggles with. On the one hand, she is uh, close to him. They make love, but uh, she is also not able to forget her husband. She is worried about him and she, she wants to go and take care of him also. She would shake her head and say, after all, he is my husband. I have to respect him. I cannot leave him there. But they do have an argument and eventually Marco discovers that Rosie is having an affair with Raju and he leaves her. But Raju becomes more interested in her and says, uh, I am a layman, not knowing much of the technicalities of the dance. I would like you to teach me something of it. Uh, and eventually he dreams of becoming her manager. Anyway, uh, things heat up between Marco and Rosie because uh, they are arguing over things and to some extent Marco also suspects that Rosie is having an affair with Raju. I wanted him to be good to her, listen to her proposals and, and yet leave her to my care. What an impossible, fantastic combination of circumstances to expect. And that is something um, which doesn't happen. Finally, uh, Marco leaves Rosie and goes away. So well, let's see how that happens. He came close to me and said, Raju, that is not good at all. Let us get away. And this is Gafur advising uh, Raju, leave them alone. After all, they are husband and wife. They will know how to make it up. Come on, 
go back to your normal work. You were so interested and carefree and happy then. I had nothing to say to this. It was very reasonable advice he was giving me. At that, even at that moment, it would have been all different if God had given me the sense to follow Gapur's advice. So this is in the in the retrospect. Raju feels that it was a good advice, a sound advice, and a very good words of concern from a friend which i should have listened to and then my life would have been normal again but he did not pay heed to it he just ignored it because he was so obsessed with rosie anyway the three of them stick around and at one point raju discovers that the husband and wife have had a big argument over something and then uh, when they meet uh, when uh, raju knocks on the door this is what rosie tells him she sat up and told me don't waste any more of your time with us you go back that's all i have to say in a thick gruff crackling voice her voice shook a little as she spoke i mean it leave us now and so raju is thrown out of the peak house and uh, from marco and rose's company and so um, he's very depressed about it and he goes back home but cannot concentrate on anything he just keeps wondering what happened all of a sudden anyway I felt bored and, and terrified by the boredom of normal life. So much had I got used to a glamorous, romantic existence. And that's another great insight of Narayan, that Raju, after he went home, uh, after spending a lot of days with Marco and Rosie, did not like his normal life. He got bored in that normal life of a shopkeeper, of a guide, because he had got so much used to that glamour and romance of uh, a life with uh, tourists and especially with someone else's wife. So he felt bored. How many days passed thus? Only 30, though they looked to me like years. So about a month passed uh, and Raju felt it was a very, very long time and very tough time uh, for him to spend at home. Anyway, one afternoon, a girl showed up at the house. My mother came and said, someone is asking for you. She didn't wait for questions, but went into the kitchen. And that girl happened to be Rosie. There stood Rosie on the threshold with a trunk at her feet and a bag under her arm. So after a month, Rosie suddenly appears at at raju's house with her luggage and says that uh, she would be staying with him my mother was amazed girls today how courageous you are in our day we wouldn't go to the street corner without an escort and i have been to the market only once in my life when raju's father was alive so she is she cannot believe her eyes that this girl rosie has showed up at raju's house with all her bags and baggages all on her own so that creates some tension between raju and his mother and at one point uh, his one of uh, his uncle that is her mom's brother arrives to um, speak on behalf of his sister what we had agreed that he should permit me to dance he was quite happy till i mentioned it so this is rosie telling how finally uh, what was the final nail in the coffin between marco and rosie rosie said that i want to, to dance and i i showed him how well i can dance and he didn't like it so i said but raju likes it so she marco asked when did you dance uh, in front of raju and when she revealed that uh, she has danced in front of Raju, he just left her. 
yet as a last trick i said encouraged by his tone this is rosie telling uh, raju i wanted you to see just one small bit which i generally do as a memento of my mother it was her piece you know i got up and pulled him by his hand to our room i pushed aside the chair and other things i adjusted my dress i pushed him down to sit on the bed and as i had done with you i sang that song about the lover and his girl on the banks of jamuna and danced the piece for him so that is uh, marco polo and he didn't like it well raju saw me do it and he was transported do you know what he said raju where did he do it where did you do it for him and uh, that's where the argument picks up between the two anyway marco leaves malguri without rosie and rosie is left alone she sat sobbing for a while i comforted you are in the right place forget all your past first i will make the world recognize you as the greatest artist of the time so this is where we come to know that after rosie asked raju not to um, visit them anymore they stayed on in malguri for about a month and after a month one day marco left the place without rosie and it is then that from the railway station rosie walked straight to raju's house and raju accepted her and they started living together as husband and wife anyway uh, raju loses his shop at the station and uh, gets into trouble with people but uh, he doesn't mind it much i felt so gloomy that i did not turn to see rosy standing aside staring at me i flung myself in a corner of the hall and shut my eyes okay now troubles keep growing for raju because he had accumulated debt so there is this sate um who takes him to the court and manages to get the house as a mortgage because raju could not pay up the bills the sate was a thin man with a multicolored turban on his head he was a prosperous businessman very helpful with credit credit but of course expected proper settlements of debts he lent money easily but also made sure that people returned his money with interest 8000 rupees i can't let this go on very long you will have to do something about it and that's where he takes him to court and the court takes over raju's house i outlined him a plan to utilize rosie's services and make money you know bharatnatyam is really the greatest art business today and that's where raju decides to become rosie's uh, manager unfortunately he was not the last my mother's turn came soon so uh Raju's mother also calls her brother to help him to get rid of Rosie from the house. Here entered the man himself standing at the door and calling his in his booming voice, "Sister!" I scrambled to my feet and ran to the door and that was her uh, mom's brother who came to make sure that Rosie is out of the house and then Raju gets in trouble with him. Uh, my uncle used to be called in to frighten me when i was a boy this is my house i do as i please here if people don't like me they need to visit they need not visit me that's all i laughed weakly so now raju answers back and tells his uncle to mind his own business he picked himself up saying you tell me to get out has it come to this 
who are you puppy to ask me to get out i will make i will make you get out this is my sister's house you go out if you want enjoyment with dancing girls however it doesn't work and then finally uh, raju's mother and uh, her brother that's uh, raju's uncle decide to leave the house my uncle now interrupted to tell his sister this is your mistake sister that wench is in a right way why should you have been so good to her so the argument continue and finally they leave my mother appeals to me have some sense raju she is another man's wife she must go back to him there was such a calm logic in what she said i had nothing more to do but repeat blindly she can't go anywhere mother she has got to stay here so just like gafur advised raju to leave rosie because uh, she was someone else's wife uh, her his mother also advises him the same and raju doesn't listen to anybody and says that she is going nowhere she just she'll be here with me i appealed to my mother you don't have to go mother but then she doesn't want to stay if rose is going to stay in the same house so she walks out of the house with her, her brother with the attainment of a new name so rosie entered a new phase of life so now with the mother gone raju had only rosie to look after and uh, rosie begins to practice her dancing in raju's presence and she also takes up a new name an indian name i was the only one who knew her as rosie and called her so the rest of the world knew her as nalini so she introduces us herself as nalini the bharatanatyam dancer and that's where her career picks up and uh, people from the albert missions boys uh, play uh, the accompaniment and um, they are the musicians who play at uh, rosie's shows and that's how rosie becomes a famous dancer and raju becomes a famous manager and they earn a lot of money together i looked up at her for a second as if waiting for her approval and said she will of course be pleased to help you but you must provide the drummer and accompanies says to the albert mission school boys and thus acquired the last accompanies rosie had been clamoring for all along my activities suddenly multiplied her name became public property so that's when rosie becomes a famous dancer and uh, they create a lot of uh, thrill around and in the process earn a lot of money from rosie's dance shows i threw a glance back to the farthest corner of the hall as if to judge the crowd and said yes it's full and swiftly turned around since dignity required that i look ahead <laughs> that's narayan's way of describing a character it was a world of showmanship till we reached the privacy of, of our house when she would throw off the restraint and formality of ours and give me a passionate hug with even if i have seven rebirths i won't be able to repay my debt to you so they have uh, this uh, professional and personal lives going hand in hand they prepare together and they and rosie performs and raju collects all the money and then when they go home they unwind and relax as husband and wife however it doesn't last long four days later my mother's letter came she had written on a yellow paper with a pencil i gave my signature not because i was happy about it but because otherwise the lawyer would not go from here and your uncle would not let him stay in peace it is all confusing to me i'll come back to live in my old house after all i wish to spend the rest of my days in my house so mother offers to come back but raju says that uh, she has gone on her own so and i'm anyway living in a new house with rosie so why should she come back i rationalized after all her brother is dear to her and he will look after her why should 
she come here and live all alone okay so on the one hand raju wants her mother back but he he has no time for her so he says okay she is better off with her brother so he doesn't let mother return to her house now this is where the trouble between rosie and raju begins i had three or four grades of visitors some i received on the veranda these were musicians or aspiring musicians who wanted a chance to accompany nalini and then the other big shots and uh, influential people came in now rosie also had her group of friends and artists whom she took her to a room they were however a few friends of the inner circle whom i took upstairs to her room and uh, eventually uh, raju did not like the popularity and fame rosie was enjoying so they started having arguments anyway but the real trouble begins one day when a book arrives if i examined my heart i knew i had pulled her out of out because i did not like to see her enjoy other people's company i liked to keep her in a citadel so because raju was uh, in love with rosie because he was upset with her he also had a sense of um sense of control over her he wanted to own her and he did not want her to belong to anyone else even to spend time with others even if they were just artists and friends and that's where the jealousy takes over even though she was the cause of his uh, good fortune sometimes she said spending 2000 a month on just two of us is there no way of living more simply and this is raju's problem also he is living so lavishly that even rosy feels it was a bit too much i was a man of many preoccupations and i found it impossible nowadays to sit down with any book and had instructed my secretary not to bother me with them but one day he brought a packet saying would you look at this sir i thought it might be of special interest and this is where marco polo reappears on the scene it is marco who had sent his book on malgori that was published and he says see page 158 now raju had no time to look at the books but because it was from marco he opened the book and it was the cultural history of south india it was a monograph by marco polo now raju hides this book from rosie because he doesn't want uh, rosie to think of marco and and uh, think of going back to him so but it was like hiding a corpse all such attempts like holding an umbrella to conceal the sun so he says i could not hide the book the reality uh, the fact that Marco had sent a book to Rosie for long because Rosie found out in a newspaper that Marco had published a book. Anyway, so Rosie is surprised why Raju did not inform Rosie about Marco's book. I laughed. I thought the best solvent would be laughter rather than words. Words have a knack of breeding more words, whereas laughter, a deafening, roaring laughter, has a knack of swallowing up everything. I worked myself into a paroxysm of laughter. She could not remain morose very long in the face of it. Presently, she caught the contagion. A smirk developed into a chuckle, and before she knew what was uh, what, her body rocked with laughter. all her gloom and misgivings exploded in laughter we went to sleep in a happy frame of mind the time was 2 hours past midnight so they had an argument but finally they laughed it off and uh, went to sleep peacefully our life fell into a routine after this little disturbance after a break of only 3 days during which time i steeped myself in the card game avoiding all discussions with her our encounters were casual and slight so they started avoiding each other 
and came together only when they had to and uh, things were not all that well. However, once they returned uh, from uh, one of her shows, there was a, a lot of uh, parcels and letters for Raju. So he was going through the correspondence and he was trying to sort out uh, what uh, letters he had received. Suddenly, I came upon a letter addressed to Rosie Elias Nalini. It had um, it had on it the address of a lawyer's firm in Madras, and the letter uh, it was uh, it had come from Madras, and the secretary money had given it to Raju. The letter had arrived by registered post some days ago, and money had received it and uh, kept it on the table. It had a big, big seal on it, its flap. It, I looked at it with misgiving for a while, told myself that I was not to be frightened by a seal and just cut it open. And what did the letter say with the seal? We shall proceed. Uh, it said, Madam, under instructions from our client, we are enclosing an application for your signature for the release of a box of jewelry left in safe custody at the bank of in the marked place after this is received we shall proceed to obtain the other signature as well since you are aware that the deposit is in your joint names and obtain the release of the said box and arrange to forward it to you under insurance cover in due course so the letter said that rosie is supposed to re receive a box of jewelry, uh, of course, sent to him by Marco, but her signature was required in a in a form that was sent in this letter. And it is at this point that Raju decides not to let Rosie know about it. And when she, while she was asleep, he he wakes up and he forges Rosie's signature. Soon after midnight, I woke. I awoke. She was snoring. I, an idea bothered me. I wanted to see if there was any time limit mentioned. And so he forges uh, Rosie's signature and he posts it. I found a scrap of paper and made a careful trial of Rosie's signature. I had her sign so many checks and receipts each day that I was familiar with it. So he forges her signature and sends the letter back to the to the firm in Madras. That evening, we had an engagement at Kalipit, a small town 60 miles away. So Raju forges Rosie's signature and sends the letter back and informs Mani that uh, watch out for a box that we will receive in a few days. And then that evening, they go for a show that uh, Rosie had in a place called Calipet and it was for a building uh, for building a maternity home so during when the show is on the superintendent of police shows up and he asks for Raju and now they were friends but um, he had something serious to tell Raju who wants me the district superintendent of police he was in plain dress and he explains that uh, there is a arrest warrant against you for forgery. So Raju says, wait till the show is over and I'll explain to you. I realized the gravity of the situation. I wish, whispered, please don't create a scene now. Wait until the end of the show and till we are back home. So they go home. The superintendent, Raju and Nalini in the same car. And uh, on the way, Raju explains to Nalini what has happened. He occupied the front seat next to the driver. I told her, our friend, the district superintendent, is coming back with us to the city. And then um, when Nalini comes to know what has happened, I went up the staircase. He followed. He stood on the landing while I went into her room. She listened to me as if I were addressing a stone pillar. Even now, I can recollect her bewildered, stunned expression as she tried to comprehend the situation. I thought she would break down. She often broke down on small issues, but this seemed to leave her unperturbed. She merely said, I felt all along you were not doing right things. This is karma. 
what can we do she came out of the landing uh, to the landing and asked the officer what shall we do about it sir is there no way out at the moment i have no discretion madam it is a non bailable warrant so raju goes to jail raju is arrested and he spends the next two days in jail in the beginning i had to spend a couple of days in the lockup among low criminals the district superintendent ceased to be friendly the moment we were in the central police station he just abandoned me to the routine care of the station officer rosie came up to see me in the police lockup and wept so this is the beginning raju spends two days in jail and finally rosie manages to get a bail for him and he is out on bail i suggested to rosie why don't you go through with the engagements for the next quarter we should receive a balance the balance of the fees because now raju knew that uh, some money will be required to fight the case she spurned continuing this perverse discussion she merely said please tell me what those engagements are and i will return all their money okay then uh, she begins to collect money for to fight raju's case she was as good as her word a sudden activity seized her she ran about with money's help she told her uh, she sold her diamonds she gathered all the cash she could selling under par all the shares she kept money spinning around she sent him to madras to pick up a big lawyer for me so rosy is trying her best to save raju from jail and then the court case takes place and there is a lawyer he presented my case as a sort of comedy in three acts in which the chief villain was marco an enemy of the civilized existence so they uh, raju's lawyer tries to portray marco as the villain and as a, as someone who tortured and abandoned rosy but it doesn't work because raju had indeed forged the signature and waited for the box to arrive the judge sentenced me to 2 years imprisonment the star lawyer did not achieve this end all at once but over a period of many months while nalini worked harder than ever to keep the lawyer as well as our household going anyway they lost the case and raju was sent to prison for 2 years in the prison he was considered a model prisoner and uh, to the extent that the superintendent promoted him to the post of a servant the superintendent transferred me to his office as a personal servant and that's how we spent the two years and that's how we came to know that rosy continued dancing with the help of money and they continued organizing shows and and rosy's career flourished and she did quite well without raju being around my mother was standing in the doorway she had never seen the inside of a court hall and was overwhelmed with a feeling of her own daring she said to me what a shame you have brought on yourself and on all known to you and now we have the last chapter raju's narration concluded with the crowing of the cock now uh that's what uh, villain has raju has done describing his story to villain all night and he has uh, explained everything to villain up to the point where he landed in jail and how he got out of jail and met villain he imagined that villain would rise with disgust and swear and we took you and would say and we took you for such a noble soul all along if one like you does penance it will drive off even the little rain that we may hope for be gone you before we feel tempted to throw you out you have fooled us but velen says nothing of it his reverence for raju has not ceased he looked on velen's silence with anxiety and suspense as if he waited on the judge's verdict again a second time raju asked now you have heard me fully like a lawyer who has a misgiving that the judge has been wool gathering 
Yes, Swamiji, said Velen. Velen looked quite pained at having to answer such a question. I don't know why you tell me all this, Swami. It's very kind of you to address at such length your humble servant. So he says, oh, well, that Swami spoke to him for such a long time. Every respectful word that this man employed pierced Raju like a shaft. He will not leave me alone, Raju thought with resignation. This man will finish me before I know where I am. So Raju feels trapped because Velen is not ready to let him go and not ready to uh, accept that he is a fraud and he is a trickster and that he has had a shady past. However, now that the news of Raju's past is announced, a lot of people from other villages and journalists and even cameramen arrive. A wandering newspaper correspondent who had come to the village picked up the news. And this was the starting point. So we see people arriving. But each day the crowd increased. This was actually the fourth day of his past. Raju almost uh, glared at him. The single man was responsible for his present plight. Why would he not go away and leave him alone? That is Velen. But Velen is convinced that Raju's fasting will bring rain back to the village. Anyway, he is standing in the water. He nearly lost all sensation except the numbness of his knees through constant contact with cold water. Lack of food gave him a peculiar floating feeling, which he rather enjoyed with the thought in the background. The enjoyment is something villain cannot take away from me. <laughs> so, so Raju is finally feeling the weightlessness that we feel uh, in water and says, this is something villain cannot take away from me, although he's bothering me all the time. Men, women and children crowded in to watch the film shows which were all about mosquitoes, malaria, plague, and tuberculosis, and BCG vaccination. When the Swami went in to lie on his mat in the hall, they came in again to look at him and stood about until Velen once again told them to keep moving. So a lot of people have gathered and they are not leaving the temple site because they know that Swamiji is fasting there. And the busiest man here was an American wearing a thin bush shirt over cor uh, corduroys. He arrived in a jeep with a trailer, dusty, rugged, with a mop of tousled hair. At about one in the afternoon on the 10th day of the fast and set himself to work immediately. Now, this is a guy who is filming something and he's uh, covering the whole episode of Raju fasting. Namaste, he said in the Indian culture. Raju looked on him with interest. The large pink-faced arrival was a novel change in the routine. Okay. And the uh, American interviews Raju because he could speak English. How long have you been without food now? 10 days. When will you break your fast? 12th day. Anyway, now we come to the 11th day. The 11th day morning, the crowd pouring in all night had nearly trebled itself because it was the last day of the fast. All night, one could hear voices of people and the sound of vehicles rattling over the roads and pathways. Villain and a band of his assistants formed a cordon and kept the crowd out of the pillared hall. They said, the Swami must have fresh air to breathe. It's the only thing he takes now. Don't choke the air. Everyone can have his darshan at the river. I promise. Go away now. He is resting. It was an all-night vigil. The numerous lanterns lamps created a crisscross of bewildering shadows on the all hedges, trees, and walls. So this is what happened on the 11th night. At 5.30 in the morning, the doctors examined Swami. They wrote and signed a bulletin saying, Swami's condition grave, declines, glucose and saline should break the fast immediately, advise procedure. Anyway, he doesn't listen to, but uh, this is the last paragraph. This is what happens in the end on the 11th day. 
villain bent close to the Swami and said, Doctors say. In answer, Raju asked the man to bend nearer and whispered, Help me to my feet, and clung to his arm and lifted himself. He got up to his feet. He had to be held by villain and another on each side. In the profoundest silence, the crowd followed him down. Everyone followed at a solemn, silent pace. The eastern sky was red. Many in the camp were still sleeping. Raju could not walk, but he insisted upon pulling himself all along, along all the same. He panted with the effort. He went down the steps of the river, halting for breath on each step, and finally reached his basin of water. He stepped into it, shut his eyes and turned toward the mountain, his lips muttering the prayer. Velen and another held him each by an arm. The morning sun was out by now. A great shaft of light illuminated the surroundings. It was difficult to hold Raju on his feet as he, ha he had a tendency to flop down. They held him as if he were a baby. Raju opened his eyes and looked about and said, Velen, it's raining in the hills. I can feel it coming up under my feet, up my legs. He sagged down. And that's how the story ends. When he's about to pass out, he feels rain coming, the rain clouds coming over. And he can feel water rising up his feet under his legs in the river and saying that I can see the rain clouds coming, he sagged down, he collapses. So either he passed out or he became unconscious. And uh, this is left at this very ambiguous point, wherein we do not know whether the rains really came or it was Raju's imagination or that uh, the rain came and Raju uh, was also saved or that Raju sacrificed his life and the rains came. There's nothing uh, clear about it, but in his last role, Raju died or we, we can think that in his last role, Raju actually became the role that he was playing. He became a Swamiji, he became a Sadhu, he became a, someone who would guide people to a new life to safety and to security, but he identified himself so much with his last character that ultimately he paid for it with his life. So that's all we have, and we will uh, discuss the novel's themes uh, maybe tomorrow or sometime later, but uh, I advise you to read the novel. Are there any questions?